Excalibur and the Sow Billy Slicer, two reworked kitchen knives, William Hovey Smith, 2017. I am the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China, where we take our inspiration from ancient Chinese designs from 3,000 years ago and make modern cooking implements out of them. We also, under our Billy Joe Rubido brand, take newer knives that have been abused and misused and remake them so they're even more useful than they were before. In this instance, I take you through a day in our shop where we rebuild Excalibur, who is a utility knife that was very, very much abused, also a sow belly slicer, a hunting knife made by Frost, and we actually make it even better, and attach a tripod base to a GoPro-type camera. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And we're in our knife shop today, and we're in the midst of completing an order of six of our knives. Uh, this is our medium-sized chopper, if you've not seen one. Uh, actually, sort of in progress. Uh, right now, we're fixing the grips. But what I want to talk to you about is this sow belly slicer. Now, this is an interesting knife. It's one of several I picked up very inexpensively, and I'm going to modify it for use for a small handed chef. Now I'm going to have to regrind this blade. And the problem is the blade is so flimsy. My knives are meant to last. They're made out of much thicker steel. Yeah. I can handle these by hand on a grinder without having going flop, 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 flop. Hmm. So what do you do in such circumstances? If you must grind a very thin blade, you have to back it. Hence this lath. So we're going to fix the lath to the blade. And then shape the lath and then grind the blade against it. That's the only way you can do a precision grind without putting it in a metal jig of some sort. And that's only really worthwhile if you're going to do hundreds of them. Hmm. I'm not going to do a hundred of these knives. Uh, I may do five in a lifetime of this exact pattern, but I'll certainly never do enough to justify making a, a hard steel jig to hold the work. I have our knife clamped to our support lath here. And we're going to put it inside the cabinet grinder. And then I'm going to proceed to remove uh, this wood to actually profile the blade to this shape. Now these clamps are going to help me hold it whilst I have it on the grinder here. But when I put it on the sander, these clamps are much too big. Because I'm going to have to get very close to the blade edge indeed with the sanding sheet. Much too close to allow for these clamps. The grinder ate away at this soft pine pretty quickly. And only once did we even touch the blade. So uh, all that went well. I have freshly dressed our little glue spatula here. And so we're going to apply as uniform a coat as I can get on our material. This glue is a little globby. Because it's so thick. This can be removed. Okay, that looks good. Fix the blade. Yeah. Now 
have some nice brand new clamps. Good, good, good. All right. Now, sweep off the excess, particularly along this edge where we're going to be grinding. set for a while and that will be good. Uh, you probably have several jobs on the way uh, setting whilst what you were just working on is gluing up and that's certainly true here. For example we have this little camera. It's a Vivitar. It's like the familiar GoPro and it is made to mount on a bicycle helmet or on handlebars. Well, I don't wear bicycle helmets very often and I currently don't have anything with handlebars except my riding lawnmower. So, if I'm going to use this, I need to adapt it to a tripod. Yeah! So, what we have done is we have glued a base to the helmet mount. Well, so now we'll be able to mount it on a tripod and use it as a second camera. That's the secret of gluing up anything. You don't rush the glue. You let it set, you let it cure more time than it usually says, and the more time you allow, the better. When you have a polymerization action, it's not complete instantaneously. And the longer you leave it undisturbed, the better your bonding will be. So, uh, we just pick up another project. And what the project is, is this knife here. This is an inexpensive knife. It's sold by Frost Cutlery. Now, it's a carbon steel blade and it's Swedish steel and the steel is good. When they ground it, however, they left the grinding marks on the blade. They really didn't finish the edge. So that's what we're going to do with it now, is we're going to finish the edge on our uh, flat belt sander here. And uh, that way the knife will be much easier to use, easier to keep clean, and actually cut better. We've gotten rid of the grind marks and have gotten a razor sharp blade. However, it needs to be stropped. Uh, it's feathered. The steel is not as hard, for example, as it is on our knife blades that we make for Hobie's Knives of China. Uh, it's not hardened quite to that extent. In fact, if I had a knife that turned out like this, uh, in my shop I would reject it as the steel being too soft. But this is what they sell. It's a good blade. It will work. It can be sharpened. And <laughs> this thing will clean a weight of a lot of game. I have flipped a belt over. I'm going to use it to get these carbon feathers off the edge here. Okay, I think that helped considerably. That's getting about where I want it. And now we're going to take our knife here and just give it a gentle buffing. And that will uh, get it to a slightly better finish than it is right now. But we're not going to do terrible much to this knife other than what we've already done.
result is not a super bright finish, but that is actually brighter than it was. And so we've improved both the appearance and the cutting characteristics of the knife. That knife will cut. With this particular blade, we're going to do two things. We're going to reduce the size of the handle uh, to fit a very small lady chef. And this blade has been so tortured that we're going to have to remove a lot of it. So we're going to reprofile the blade to more or less that contour here. I may be able to work it quickly on the grinder. Uh, this steel is so, so thin. Uh, we just have to see how it reacts. And also the handle material. I may have to reduce the uh, speed of the grinder. Uh, this handle material may <coughs> want to melt and gum up the grinder very, very badly. So we'll just try it and see what happens. Okay, it's actually a hollow casting. Okay, we'll just grind the whole stuff off and we'll put new scales on it. That'll solve that problem all together. I'm now starting to reprofile the knife blade uh, with this grinder. It does not take very much. Yeah. Now looking quite a bit different than it did. We got most of the real bad, terrible looking places out of it. So I'm going to let this cool and then reduce this handle material down to the metal. With a small profile knife I'm going to be making, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the handle link to about here and round it and also make it more nearly straight line from there. This will still leave two attachment holes here for the pins, which are more than sufficient to hold the work. And profile to a point right here. There are some deep scratches in the blade right there. And the choice is either to take the blade and reprofile it to eliminate those, go all the way up to here or uh, attempt to take care of these in the buffing process. I want to do the handle first and see how that looks before I finish the rest of the play. Well the knife is telling us what it needs to be. Seen in this direction there is a bend right here and these scratches here on the surface of where it underwent great stress and it was taken beyond the elastic limit of the steel. Uh, that bend is best just removed altogether. So the profile of the blade actually the point is going to start about here and we'll reduce the thickness of the blade accordingly. I've decided to go with rosewood for the grips of our little knife there which already has a name on it, by the way. It's called Excalibur. <laughs> oh, I think it has delusions of grandeur. But uh, at any rate, it's looking better than it were. Well, we have completed the rough grinding of the blade. Uh, quite different knife than it was swatched. So now uh, we're going to work on the handle material and the edge, but we'll use a different tool to do it. The pinholes here in Excalibur are vastly different diameters. Now that I have the knife scales cut, drilled, and pinned, I'm going to go ahead and finish up these butt scales here that face actually the blade, and that way we make sure that we get them finished even and to the same degree. Okay, that way we can get that little final work there. 
nicely done. Now we're ready to glue up and pin. Now our new scales look much different than the old. The other end of these scales, the other side, is rocking because it's irregular. But that really doesn't make any difference. What makes a difference is that these scales that we're trying to bond, that those are very, very flat and smooth indeed, so that you get a maximum contact between your, all your surfaces here. Got it. Okay. Got both pins through, so we know we did good. Now we got some clamps on here, and we just let this good stuff do its job. Excalibur here is on its way to being a knife. Now that the pins have done their work, off they come. We have a lot of excess wood right here at the end. So we're going to put this on the bandsaw and just cut this back end off just to save the time from having to grind it away. At this stage you could go to the belt sander, but I prefer to do the initial roughing uh, here in the grinding box. Either will work. We now have the handle rough shaped on the grinder and we're ready to put it on the sander. But the thing about doing this much energy into this knife right now, it is very hot. So I'm going to let it cool and we are going to proceed to work on our sow belly slicer here and do its initial shaping of the edge. While it is bonded, as you see, still to this piece of lath. Okay, that's all it took. The edge is not ground. You could have never done that if I hadn't had it on this solid back. So now we can remove the wood. I'm going to put this, I'm going to take it to a coarse grit now and get the great bulk of this wood off. Grinding on this wood generated enough heat to weaken the glue bond to the point I was able to take my knife here and run it alongside the blade and just peel the wood off the blade. Yeah, a little glue is left here, but this can easily be removed. Again, I'm going to do the initial wood removal in the cabinet grinder. I have a little more cosmetic stuff to do with our two knives that we've been working with today. But we are basically done. Excalibur here now has an edge, a new grip, and is much shortened. You remember it was a knife about this long and the grip was a very large grip came down to here. Whereas our sow belly slicer here now has a polished blade and a shortened grip. Now both of these knives are being made 
for a cook who has very small hands. Hence, the grip size on here has been reduced. Now, what remains to be done here is I need to put the finished sanding and coating on these grips. They're very nearly there, but not quite. I have one little touch-up to do on the blade here. Maybe one more pass uh, on the buffing wheel to get a little blemish there out of the blade and of course to refinish the grip but otherwise yeah we're fairly well done now what do these knives cost well they don't cost as much as our uh, custom knives uh, because I had the material to start with uh, these knives are priced at hundred and fifty dollars each so uh, after I finish with them that's how I'll price these rebuilt knives. But they're now perfectly usable, in much better looking shape than they were, certainly, and actually will function better than they did when they were new. It's been a long day at the shop today, from before dawn till after dark, with a little break to go to town. But now, this is Hovey Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Here is a now officially registered U.S. trademark of our Hobie's Knives of China. Some of our knives on a red background. And I also talk about knives in all of my outdoor books. And these include backyard deer hunting, crossbow hunting, and extreme muzzleloading. Knowing the working characteristics of the material and adhesives allow a craftsman to produce things with relatively simple tools that would otherwise not be possible. Now there is real satisfaction in taking these old knives and making them useful again. For more information on Hobie's Knives of China, you can go to the blog below. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 600 videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.